welcome to another episode of the Diamond Dialogue. We're here with uh, the fabulous and talented Tanky from the chat room. Hello there. Hello. <laughs> we rather we prefer I call you Tanky or, or Gabrielle. Uh, Tanky's fine. It's okay. What I've been going on with online for ten years or so. No, oh, sure, and everybody knows who is that, so <laughs> works out pretty good. We got the it's chat room. Common. With it's as like well. my actual real name. My real world name is not Gab, so that's fine. Yeah, exactly. It's it's, <laughs> it's more real than real. <laughs> I made my name. Exactly. <laughs> Well, excellent. Uh, so we we got joined by the chat room too down there. So hopefully they have some uh, some interesting things to say. At least that's usually how it goes. But we'll get right in with the questions. We already covered part of this, but who the hell are you, and how did you get here? Uh, it must have been a couple of years ago. Um, I've, as most people from chat room would know, I'm working on nighttime. So I typically get a few podcasts and uh, you know try to survive with them. Uh, I got into NSFW around episode 70 or so, and ever since I've been following it, and it came a time where the transition to Night Attack, I could actually be there live, so I decided to, you know, take a stand and actually get involved with the community, so. That's awesome. That's that's pretty much how it went, but, you know, I've, I've been lurking the shadows for a while, I just, you know, knew all the people, nobody knew me, that's about it. <laughs> no, I tend to be a lurker a lot of times too, so especially if I'm like actually working or you know working, <laughs> then I. That's I kinda... pretty much how it is when you're always after the facts. So uh, I saw a chance to actually contribute, so that's why I got around doing that old intro <laughs> fiasco thingy with the first and second versions. Yeah, that's. I mean, if anybody doesn't know, Tanky's the one that made the um, actually both versions of the Night Attack opening, which was just amazing. And especially the new one, that it really you, you did a spot-on job, man, making it look like Brian's studio. That's that's really good. <laughs> uh, I tried. Uh, it took a lot of time, and now somebody actually made it a real thing. So it's kind of yeah, neat to yeah. see uh, that it actually got approval. <laughs> that's that's awesome. And whistle that uh, that was whistle, right? That did that, if I remember correctly. Uh, believe so. Yeah. Sorry, my memory is terrible. <laughs> So, all right, speaking of, of memory, I remember a lot of uh, my favorite movies. So we're going to talk about some of yours. You get stranded on a desert island with only three movies to watch for the rest of your days. And what, what are those movies? I kind of hate that question because I'm not really a moviegoer, but well, uh, I'll try. Shows. You, can, you can pick TV shows. They just have to be relegated to what would fit on approximately a DVD or a movie size thing. Okay. Um... To be honest, I'd start with something like Fight Club, because I was a, an angsty teenager and it actually like defined a part of my life. And I'm very nostalgic about these things, so, you know, seeing, uh, seeing the world try to crumble and everything. Plus, oh. when you look at it today, it feels as if, you know, that's the kind of person you need in this uh, very distraught world that we live in. Um, yeah, Fight, Fight Club's an amazing movie. I mean, it still holds up. It's really, really well done. It's just so well done. Well, well, let's say I have an afternoon where I'm sick. I'll usually grab the book once in a while and just go through because, honestly, it's pretty short, so it's fun. Right. Um, second and third, okay, let, let's just say um, I'll take a random uh, season of, let's say, The Simpsons. Well, at least season one to ten. Oh, okay, yeah, early, early season of The Simpsons, gotcha. Yeah, uh, I would say it's just uh, one thing that I can watch any time that would make me... Uh, cozy, so to speak, so uh, seeing that I don't like deserted islands, especially if they're in the sun, I need something to get me to that, you know, special place. Yeah, that's awesome. It's actually, we, we keep the, The Simpsons is one of those episodes that we watch every week, but we don't keep every episode, but we keep the Treehouse of Horrors episodes, because they're just, you know, the, the Halloween ones, they're so good. And so we'll yeah. sit down and we'll watch those all in a run sometimes. It's a good time. As far as the third one, um... Nothing really comes to mind, unfortunately, so I'll go with the random pick of Futurama, just because it's in the same vein. Oh, yeah, that's and Futurama oh. is the same way with it. We have every episode of Futurama, all the movies, it's, we actually watch it probably, we'll go through, we'll go through the whole series probably three times in a year, like every year. But there's just this one thing about Futurama that I, uh, that I typically do. I do enjoy the latest seasons, but I think the first seasons are more fun because it's fun to look back at the time where things were relevant like Napster and things like that <laughs> whereas when it's actual it just feels like oh look at me I'm doing easy jokes and if you look at it later it feels like a commentary of the of the time right 
Yeah, the, and the, the early episodes are great, too, because you got to see Fry trying to fit in with the, <laughs> you know, the future and everything. Well, excellent. Those are those uh, are some good choices. You get Big Mac groaning fan, I guess. <laughs> uh, what suppose? So here's this one's always an interesting one to hear. <clears throat> you're given a superpower. You, you get to choose because your superpower. Well, your superpower kind of chooses you too. So, what would that superpower be, and what's the first thing you would do? Um, I have to struggle between two, but I'll take uh, I'll, I'll take the one that I think is more interesting. Um. It was either between the typical invisibility scale, but then I remembered that it wouldn't take long before you get run over by a car. So that that settles it. Yeah, so hard to stop instead, I'll go into uh, be able being able to see into the future. Ah, so some some precognition, huh? Uh, kind of, and I guess it's just because I'm a schemer and I like to manipulate things. So it would actually help me a lot to see the possibilities of, you know, if I slap you on the right or on the left, what would happen from there? Oh, right. The whole snowball effect, I would say. No, that's that's actually, that's a really good one. So, so what's the first thing you would do with it then? Uh, probably gather some funds. So I guess lottery numbers. There you go. It's there. practical. I mean, what right, could yeah. you not use it for? Oh, I know. You can get some money and then go traveling and steal money from people there and. <laughs> Not stealing, obtain in the series of events that would make them give it to you. See, there you go. Yeah, you you steal it from them while they think they're giving it to you. That's the way to do it. <laughs> I like the way you put it. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, that's a, that's a really good choice. I never even thought about that one. Precog, that'd be, that'd be a really good superpower. So, what what game are you currently wasting all your time on? Uh, well, I'm actually done wasting time, uh, fortunately. <laughs> Uh, but I've been uh, doing a marathon of The Witcher. I've heard about this. I I put it off for a while. I mean, I have about 50 hours on it, but I had seen only the slight beginning because I had restarted three times, and always, life always got in the way. So. Right. Uh, Sounds a little like Assassin's Creed and me. <laughs> yeah, except Assassin's Creed. Okay, uh, I won't go all ranty, but there are games that I feel that if I've played 10 minutes, I know the whole game. Yeah. Whereas The Witcher, I basically did not play for the gameplay, but the actual story. So it it, it got me involved more than uh, most games, even if it came out in I think uh, 2011. Oh yeah, yeah. That's um, <clears throat> you know, I, I did enjoy uh, Assassin's Creed because I haven't played The Witcher, but um, or is it The Witcher or just Witcher? Uh, the Witcher the one Witcher. and two, and you can basically bypass the first one if you were uh, so inclined. <laughs> Oh, so there's, the stories aren't uh, exactly tied in. Well, well, you'll get them, but your uh, your character is basically uh, amnesia. Uh, how do you say? Well, doesn't have this memory anymore, so oh, okay. it makes sense not to know the event of four. Oh, that's that's an interesting way to do the game. I like that. I may I may have to check that out. I don't often have a lot of time to play console games, but uh, when I can sneak it in you there. You want to play it on PC, though, if uh, if it were up to me. Oh, okay. Even better. You're a woman after my own heart. <laughs> and I'm pretty much a PC gamer myself, too. Uh, although my wife really likes the console for certain games. Like, she's a big Kingdom Hearts fan, and she likes... Uh, uh, the What's that Rockstar game that came out where you're, um, you're a detective? Grand Theft Auto? <laughs> no. Okay, uh, L.A. Noir. L.A. Noir, yes. Thank you. She loves L.A. Noir. And that's, that's, a, that's a really good game with, with a really good story, too, so... And so now, now for the the one that probably says a lot about you, if you could move to any planet, you know, science fiction, real life, whatever, which would it be? And describe your house. Um, I tried to think about it, and as much as I'm a sci-fi geek at some point, well, sci-fi geek is uh, something that people would burn me on the stake for saying because I'm not really a fan of Star Wars, but. <laughs> Uh, I would say probably the Citadel, even though it's not a planet, it's a giant satellite in the Mass Effect universe. Oh, okay. That's a game I have. I have. It's a downloaded on the PlayStation. I've not taken the time to play, though. It looks so good, and I hear so many good things about it. I just, again, I need like 36, maybe 48 hours each day, and then maybe we can get this taken care of. <laughs> yeah, well. It's not that long, honestly, unless you're hunting for all the little side jobs of sweeping the floors at every house that you get. <laughs> but uh, the thing I enjoy about it is how everything is interconnected. There's uh, basically those uh, those living places that are so green. Those places that are, it's basically just being in a giant uh, a giant floating arc of sorts, and that that is something that 
I really like. That's really and cool. to be honest, I'm not the kind of person who needs a house. So just having like a block of some sort in, uh, you know, whatever place would be fine. I, I love the metallic feel and everything like that. Oh, awesome. So you just like kind of pick a cave or something to, to hang out in? Uh, I suppose I would. I mean, everything's interconnected. You don't even need furniture at that point. Right. That's that's a that's a really interesting answer, I, and it makes me want to play Mass Effect now. So, <laughs> so this thanks. game is all about the ambience. Honestly, it sells a world that is believable at some point. And that's and that's what I think is really interesting in fiction. You know, be it games or, or anything, any science fiction that can make me believe that this could be a thing. Like even if it's pretty out there, but but they can walk me towards. Hey, if we did this, 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 and this. You know, maybe it's a thing. <laughs> so that's and that, that's really cool because then you really get immersed in the game and stuff. So you know, speaking well, that's of... when you have a good narrative director on a on a game. <clears throat> if they can sell you something as functional and believable, then they've, they've done their jobs. Yeah, exactly. Right, writing is key, pretty much above anything else in in entertainment anymore. I mean, look at Game of Thrones. It's amazingly written show, and, and of course, they did a really good job shooting it, which doesn't hurt. So <laughs> indeed. So, and speaking... I'll not speak of it because there's no way I can't spoil that series. Yeah. No, yeah, that's the, we'll say the words Game of Thrones, and that's that's about all we'll talk about on here. So, if you want to be spoiled, go go to Cord Killers. There's a lot of spoiler in zones you can catch up on. <laughs> so speaking of games, I know you're a, a 3D artist. So what, what's the favorite uh, th your your favorite 3D model that you've ever made? Um. Well, 3D model is pretty specific. I would say 3D whatever at this point because I basically grew up uh, trying my skills at level design mostly. Oh, okay. And if you take this in the past, it used to be something that we called mapping because it was basically you take, let's say, uh, the Amor editor for Half-Life and then you just plug in stuff, use the resources they give you, and that that's where you go from. Whereas modeling nowadays is you create assets to then be used and, you know, it's basically uh, all of your creation now instead of just putting together things. Oh, yeah, nice. When I was younger, I mean, I would just create, I would basically replicate in other games the best levels that I thought were in other games. Never really, it didn't always work, but let's say playing Duke Burger in Quake was more fun than playing it in Duke Nukem. <laughs> I can see that. That's pretty. So, you, so you uh, would like all these old, uh, the old level designs and stuff that you used to make? Uh, I sadly lost everything due to having like four computers since and a couple of hard drives clicking. So <laughs> let's just say it's all in the past. Nowadays, I'm mostly focusing on uh, Unreal Four uh, to uh, to learn and uh, to to get better at developing for it. Uh, seeing that I'm actually in school for such endeavors, uh, yeah, it's a good thing to take uh, and to uh, to get into. Oh yeah, that's awesome. So you but said... to actually answer the question, yeah. I would say the uh, my most fun model lately was that uh, gecko that I've spammed everyone with. Oh yeah, I think if anybody's a regular member of chat room, it's it's a re pretty cool looking metallic gecko that that she made. Um, I d I should have pulled it up beforehand, but I didn't think about it because I could show it. But no, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, basically, that project was a final in the introduction to 3D of my class. Uh, fortunately for me, I wasn't. I was already introduced to 3D, so I just did something as complex as I could for the amount of time that I had. And seeing that I aspire to be what they call a rigger, which hmm. is basically doing the armature in the model, the bones and the controls for it to then send to the animators so that they can use the everything as if it was a puppet instead of moving bones one by one. Right, which um, is a pain in the ass. <laughs> it is, but... You know, people like me come around, and we code a couple of things, and then it makes everything easy. You want to flap a wing? You don't have to adjust the whole wing. You just like press the button to up flap, down flap, and there you go. Oh, that's that's really cool. That's I, I'm amazed by the people that that do that. You know, you you can amazed by you because <laughs> you do some crazy work. And I did I did some 3D Studio Max and some some True Space stuff in high school, and it's just not my kind of thing. I'm not an artist like that. I tried, <laughs> but it it never looked that great and. I actually, the it's one all thing, about time and commitment, honestly. Right. The one thing I actually did that was pretty cool was um, I got to combine two classes because I was in a biology class, and then we had a, a what's called like a tech lab class. It's um, it's kind of like a computer lab, but they have more. They had like milling machines and and robotic stuff and pneumatic stuff, and so it was kind of more like a small machine shop. 
Yeah, it was, but it was also very computer uh, oriented as well. So it was kind of a, just a technology. They called it the technology lab. So you kind of go in there, you do it, you know whatever new stuff. People built model cars and then figured out how to make their own remote controls for them and stuff. And it was all sorts of cool stuff. But I used um, True Space to, um, I believe it was True Space that I used to animate, including all the insides, the uh, cell division of, um, uh, or actually mitosis. You know where cells divide and then the, mm -hmm. the gene split and everything. So. It was it was really fun, but it took me like two weeks of, of making it, and and then another like two weeks to render it because you know you're talking we're running on Pentium twos or something back then. Good old but, memories. Oh yeah, but, actually you know, just good old no memories. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. So speaking of you, you're in school. Speaking of school, um, when you get out of school, what's your dream company to work for? I know you got actually quite a few up there in Canada. Uh, well, I'm liking, uh, I wouldn't say that because I know you have other Canadian listeners, but as far as we know, uh, there are three spots in Canada that are interesting for game companies. There's Vancouver, there's Toronto, and then there's Montreal. Mm -hmm. And you can say Edmonton with uh, Bioware and all the likes, but they've since been migrated to uh, to the coast since, the, oh, okay. since they've been bought by uh, EA. Sure. So basically it's a big empire now instead of being located in one place. And being that I'm from Montreal, uh, we have uh, we have about five uh, AAA studios, hmm. and I like most of them. Actually, I like them all. But if I had the choice to pick which one I'd like to work for, it would probably be IDOS or Warner Games. Uh, they seem to have the projects that are most in line with the things I like. Hmm. Warner, what what's something that that like a title that that maybe we would all know that each of those companies put out? You said uh, Spyglass was the first oh, one? Eidos. Uh, oh, that Eidos. company that oh, used to I'm be sorry. European that came to Montreal. Uh, the last game they put out was T4, which was iffy at best, but they still put out the, the latest uh, Deus Ex and such. Okay. Um, I know who so you're going to Seeing that I'm a real cyberpunk nut, it's pretty much in line with me. Right. And as far as it goes for Warner, it's uh, basically I would like to be in one of the not smaller, but younger companies to uh, to set myself on the market, to to be honest. Um, you know, if you can get there early on, even though it's been a couple of years now, you have more chances of growing within that company, so. Certainly. Yeah, that's... Um... It's all about strategy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, if you can get in, in somewhere early or smaller, it your talents aren't necessarily overshadowed or have the chance to even be overshadowed by as many people. It's it's easier to stand out when there's only like five people, you know, than, than when there's a hundred and you got to be that one person that comes up with the cool idea. Yeah, but you still want to be good, so that's oh, yeah. not something to make you get lazy. No, yeah, definitely not. Definitely not lazy, but maybe a little easier. <laughs> <laughs> I'll not deny that. Right. <laughs> So I know that you uh, you also used to do game reviews since we're on that whole gaming theme. Um, what is the <laughs> worst game you ever had to do a review of? Oh. Uh, I mostly did reviews uh, back during the time of Xbox Live and the first, the first iteration of uh, PSN. And people are not going to like me for saying that, but I think one of the games that I liked the least on the PS2 era of online gaming was the SOCOM series. Mm. Uh, I know they're dear to many friends that I have, but back then I was a Counter-Strike player, so I guess the uh, fanboyism got the best of me because I could only see like a game trying to be something it wasn't. Right. I played a lot of Counter-Strike uh, too, so I definitely but know what you're When I think about, about it uh, in a more objective manner, it's you know it was an interesting game, but couldn't help to shake that feeling that you know it could be better if it was its own original thing. But you know, back then it was all the tactical shooters that were coming out, and honestly, that wave of games like Call of Duty and stuff like that, I just can't stand them anymore. I think. You know, I have kind of the same feeling that it's like because you have what Call of Duty, you have the uh, Battlefield, you have um, uh, what's the Tom Clancy one. Um, uh, I, well, it depends. Uh, there was Rainbow Six, there was Ghost Recon, there was uh, I'm trying to remember. There's Splinter one that... Cell, I guess. Yeah, maybe I'm thinking Rainbow Six, but essentially it's, it's kind of all the same idea. Like, even Halo to an extent is... I mean, at least Halo is a completely different story. You take it to the sci-fi realm, you get cool, you know, different ideas, but 
I don't know. It's, it just seems like like first person shooters have kind of hit a wall where it's it's all the same thing, just different skins. Maybe that's just my well, opinion. <laughs> I think it's uh, it depends how far your side is. Uh, I'll admit I've skipped a lot of games lately because they felt like they were too similar. And then you get those games like, uh, let's say, Arma, you get Borderlands. They, mm. they all have their own unique feels. Uh, then you get mods like uh, DayZ, because I, I refuse to say Z. <laughs> and uh, uh, all those really creative and original ideas that basically you know make the land flourish. And after a while, then you get copies of those games. So you have to get in early in the new concept before you get tired of it. Yeah, I can I can agree with that. That's it's actually pretty pretty level headed <laughs> thought there. <laughs> so, uh, do you have anything else to plug? I know we've talked a little bit about about what you've done. Do you have any? Uh, do you have a website where you show off some of your stuff or anything like that? Uh, I don't have a website yet, uh, simply because I don't have any. Uh, <laughs> I don't have anything to show off yet, but that should come in the next year. Uh, let's see, you can get my uh, Squarespace referral or something. Um, I mostly post my things on, I would say, Twitter if I have anything of interest. But I'm, you know, you can find me on the chat realm. Yeah, so the chat realm or uh, I, I don't really do the media thing right, so yeah, <laughs> no, that's cool. But chat realm or at Tanky on Twitter. Oh, and uh, Link says, what about Elder Scrolls? Skyrim is a first-person game. You shoot things in. Does that count? No, that's an RPG. That's <laughs> yeah, Skyrim. I still give uh, the Elder Scrolls a uh, big credibility uh, factor. Uh, Morrowind is still one of my all-time favorites, and I wish I could play it like the first time I played it, because nowadays it's just hard to get back into, like if you were to go back to your DOS classics. I feel we're at this point in uh, 3D gaming where old games just feel too old now. Right. Yeah, and, and yeah, it's, it's, you know, to me, Skyrim and, and uh, like, Dragon Age go in the same boat, you know, except that Skyrim's arguably a bit cooler. I don't know, Dragon Age is pretty neat, too, though. You gotta love dragons, so... <laughs> That's another game I never finished. <sighs> so bad. <laughs> Even games I love, I don't finish. Oh, why do you hate them so? I, I don't hate them. I love the games. I just, I just can't finish them. <laughs> just, that's like Assassin's Creed. I literally got to this one. Uh, it's probably near the end. It's you're, you're at some guy's hanging in Assassin's Creed, and then you get attacked by all these guys because they realize you're there to watch the hanging or the, you know, the beheading or whatever it is. And I, <laughs> I tried for like a full day to get out of that battle and um i could never win it and i haven't played the game since <laughs> i just kind of rage quit and haven't looked back <laughs> i would get that uh when you get this obstacle that you can't surmount and you're either forced to look up a strategy online or to just like try to pull through yeah try it's... that <laughs> <laughs> it's not always fun no. There's this one thing that I'm giving to uh, Grand Theft Auto V, which is if you die too often during that one mission, you can skip to the end as if you successfully completed it, just to move on with the damn story. Oh, that see, that, that's a good idea because that that's part of the thing with Assassin's Creed that I that I was like, well, you know, the story is kind of interesting, the, the first one, because then after that it's kind of mm -hmm. the same story, just different setting. Um, but yeah, I, I you're right. I got I got angry and I still am kind of angry at the game. <laughs> And when you'll try to get back to it in a year, you won't remember the controls, and you'll have to start from the beginning. Right, and I'll have to start all the way from the beginning, and yeah, which means that uh, in the end, I probably won't end up playing the game at all. So, <laughs> uh, that's all right. In any event, I have one final question for you. Very you well. just got to ask yourself this question, though. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? That's dirty airy, is it? Yeah, it totally is. I'm glad you could you could recognize the Clint Eastwood movie. Uh, I recognize the quote. Never seen the movie. Yeah, that's uh, it. You, you, you can scream at me right away. I'm looking chat. Yeah. <laughs> no, they they probably won't scream at you. It's been forever since I've seen that movie, and I only saw it like once a long time ago. So, well, excellent. Well, Thanks. I do feel lucky, punk. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for joining me, Tanky. And uh, again, in case anybody missed it, that's at T-E-N-K-Y on Twitter. So you can follow her and spout all your, your hate for, for Dirty Harry at her. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll be spending the whole day and afternoon looking for it. So uh, and I'll reply to every single one. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, we'll take the, uh, the elevator back out, as, is the, as, as seems to be the thing that we do here now. So thanks for joining us on Diamond Dialogue, and we'll see you next time.